Haters hate it, problems I can create it. My pistol is nickel plated. All of my friends can get a F you. Friendship is overrated. You waited, you prayed it's the arrival of the mixtape. God, I Today, Chameleonaire is a topic of conversation. When most people think of Chameleonaire, they think of the lyrics, they see me rolling, they hating. They see me rolling, they hating. These lyrics are nostalgic, upbeat, and dare I say catchy. Today, we'll be discussing the life decisions, beefs, and investments of the money making machine known as Chameleonaire. Let's get started. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Chameleonaire was born in the late 70s in Washington, D.C. The rapper has a mixed cultural and religious heritage with a Muslim Nigerian father and a Christian African American mother. At the age of four, Chameleonaire and his family moved to Houston, Texas, where they resided as a family until his parents split in his early teens. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl Mo Fox right here on Music Mania. To my right, I got your boy straight out of Houston. Are you from Houston? Is it Houston? Am I saying it right? I know it's Texas, someplace. While at school, he met Paul Wall before he became a famous rapper, and the pair were soon inseparable, developing a deep shared love for hip hop, the kind of music his parents frowned upon and highly opposed to him enjoying. How did y'all two boys hook up, man? I mean, grew up together. Me and Paul, we known each other since we was this high, man. You know what I'm saying? So so years old, man. That's love. That's why we vibe so good together. You know what, what school y'all went to? Oh, man, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> that's all <awesome. laughs> <laughs> It's all great. They might try to look us up in the yearbook. But so it be the duo were smart about the way they entered the music industry, originally debuting as part of a musical trio with PKT called The Sleepwalkers, which performed gospel rap at churches and local youth festivals. Do you wanna know how we go on the low Trunk popping out, dropping in the wind blow. Real niggas spraying, gripping on the low. Wherever as time went on, their music became more gritty as they delved into the world of hip hop. On one glorious day, while Paul Wall and Chameleonaire were at an event promoting themselves, they ran into Michael 5000 Watts. The meeting proved a pivotal moment for the rappers, as they managed to get a job at Michael's Swisher House label doing promotions. The promotions led to freestyles, which after a lot of convincing, managed to land them features on various mixtapes, and after that it wasn't long until their name was known in the streets. Man, me and Chameleon, you know what I'm saying, we started off as water boys in the game, man. We was passing out flyers, you know what I'm saying, we was DJing, throwing parties, man, we did everything. We, we used to be the bouncers at the club, the door, man, you know what I'm saying, taking the door stuff. But really, man, what we was really hot on was promotions, man, we was the water boys, man. You know what I'm saying? We started at the bottom and worked our way up to the top. That's how we got in cool with Watts. And you know what I'm saying? We, we of course, rap. We did our own thing. Uh -huh. And then, you know what I'm saying? Good mind thinks alike. You know what I'm saying? You know how the fairy tale goes. You know what I'm Great minds think alike. We came together, collaborated with Watts. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And it was like, you know what I'm saying? Bill Gates, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's up you know what I'm saying? We took over the game. Y'all tell the truth. <laughs> You can't tell, just look at the ice in my bezel. My bread is green, but it ain't stale. As their popularity grew, they were breaking down boundary after boundary. However, they were not getting paid. The dissent within the ranks due to their financial strain grew until Chameleon and Paul Wall eventually split off and founded their own mixtape crew, the color changing click. Come here, come close, come close, come close. Look at this election. Look at this election, man. I mean. I don't know what to get. I never know what to get. Hey. Who drinks this, man? Old Not me. Man. Old man. Old man drink that? <laughs> I don't drink that, man. I'm with a black crew up. Niggas that'll get around with the crew up. Oh! Stepping out, I'm looking good. Gucci down to the floor. In addition, Camillionaire also founded his own record label, Camilitary Entertainment. Soon after this, they went straight to work and released a lot of mixtapes, which made their popularity grow even further. 
This eventually led to Paul and Cam landing a deal with Paid and Full Records, and the pair signed a one album deal, resulting in 2002's collaboration album Get Your Mind Correct. The album was a massive hit locally, selling over 150,000 copies and earning a nomination for Independent Album of the Year around 2002 from The Source magazine. The deal was seemed to take over the hip hop world together, and in between releasing mixtapes for the color changing click, they began recording music for their next collaboration album called Controversy Cells, which would also be released through Paid in Full. Ironically, however, the pair soon began developing controversy between themselves, and artistic differences soon became a problem that they could not shake. The situation was worsened by Paul Wall's friendship with Mike Jones, who Chameleon Air claimed was displaying friendship to him while he was around, but throwing dirt on his name when he was not. This led to Chameleon Air throwing several unanswered disses at Jones through his debut solo mixtape effort, Mixtape Messiah, around 2004. You the rapper they tired of. How the hell you say you blew up so quick and then rub it in when you ain't seen a royalty check and know nothing about publishing. The tensions between Paul Wall and Chameleon Air continued to grow to the point where instead of releasing a collaboration album, they decided to record two separate albums that were packaged together. And it was me, Paul Wall, Lou Hawk. 5050 Twin, Young Row, and Chameleon, we were all part of Color Change of Click, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, Lou Hawk, you know what I'm saying? Twin wouldn't let him live with him no more, so the nigga came and asked could he live with me. I said he could stay there for a little while, you know what I'm saying? And at the time, you know, I was, um, you know, putting out me a little CD, you know. It wasn't much. I was trying to work on my little rhyming skills, you know what I'm saying? You know, trying to put out something. I was all right, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it was called Ghetto Status, you know what I'm saying? And uh, this boy, Lou Hawk, been living with me, you feel me? He been living with me the whole time, like for a good three months while I was making it, you know what I'm saying? He knew it was called Ghetto Status and all that. So, man, me and a nigga, you know, he started doing some stuff that I didn't agree with. I'm a grown-ass man, you know what I'm saying? And uh, anyway... Paul Wall and uh, Chameleon split up, you know what I'm saying, and Lou Hawk, man, he had really did so much stuff that my brother didn't agree with, you know what I'm saying, that I ain't even gonna just put out there, you know what I'm saying, so Lou Hawk went with Paul, you know what I'm saying, but at the same time, our CD, my CD was coming out, you know what I'm saying, that's all I had to, you know, really make some money, you know what I'm saying, and uh, we started to move the CD and come to find out, you know what I'm saying, we got to the stores and they're like, man, I already got ghetto status, you know what I'm saying, I already got it, and we was like, nah, what are you talking about, man, we about to bring it right now, we just got it, we just got it, you know what I'm saying, and they're like, nah, I'm telling you, I got it, Lou Hawk brought it to me, so me and Cam look at each other like, what? Things continued to escalate until Chameleon's brother was allegedly attacked by Paul Wall and his entourage at a nightclub. Though this claim was never substantiated, Cam expressed disappointment with Paul Wall, especially considering they came up together. Chameleon Air then released a diss track at Paul Wall, this time called Go Head. A Texas legend with the most lyrical style, single hook and spit ain't always by the freestyle. We don't try to be pals, no man. Don't wanna holler at me now, you should write a book and call it How To Be Down. Eventually, after completing his contractual obligations to pay them full, Chameleon Air left the label, along with his half-finished album, to focus on promoting and growing his label, Chameleon Entertainment. Some cars and you know what I'm saying, trying to do it big. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You doing you know any calls for the man? Like David Banner just came through today, man. So we about to hook him up, man. And shout out to Pimp C, man. While Paul Wall ended up returning to Swisher House, Chameleon Air signed all the remaining members of the color changing click to his label, along with OG Ron C, and focused on growing his label and his own solo career. Controversy Sells, the Paul Wall and Chameleon Air album eventually reached the public around 2005 after both rappers had left the label. According to Cam, this is the reason why he had issues with Paul. When I was on Swisher House, we was paying dues there. We was rapping and it was cool. It was like an internship. You can only do an internship for so long. My internship at Swisher House lasted so long that I was going home to my family and there was eating cereal for dinner. I mean, I gotta get paid. My lifestyle. Me and Paul Wall grew up together, but we grew up completely different. He didn't have the same type of family I had. His parents were more supportive. I was supporting my family, and I was young doing that. I had to call the shots and make a decision. It was at Swisher House that I really decided I'd rather not work for someone else. Nobody's gonna put a salary cap on me and tell me how much I can make. It was cool we were paying dues, but I'd rather go to the CAO and ask him, 
When am I going to get a check for these 18 mixtapes I put out? And when am I going to see some money? And the CEO would say, you're paying your dues. And I got to the point when I said I'm tired of paying dues and I branched off. It was a risk because Swisher House was the biggest label out at the time. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I was going to do something to get some money. With Paul, we grew up together. There was a lot of divide and conquer. People telling him things in his ear and people telling me things in my ear. And then you got two guys who were friends all their lives splitting up. But that's the nature of the game. You know what I'm saying? On the solo front, Camillionaire was always about his business. Aside from developing Camillionaire Entertainment and signing a distribution deal with Universal, Camillionaire had invested in an auto dealership and car customization shop called Fly Rides Custom Toys in Houston, which was run by his old friend, Big Ernest. Out here in Texas, that car thing is big. We'll do videos and rent all kinds of cars and people will waste all kinds of money on them and instead, they can come spend that money with me. After establishing both his investment and his label, Cam turned his attention back to his solo career. Around 2004, he dropped his first mixtape called The Mixtape Messiah and dropped another one around 2005 called The Truth From The Ground Up and another one called Man on Fire. He also finally dropped his debut album around 2005 called The Sound of Revenge. Now the album was an absolute smash on the charts, picking at number 10 on the Billboard 200 and selling about 130,000 copies in the first week. Well, my whole purpose basically is just to show them a different side of Texas, you know what I'm saying? Just to let them know there's a big stereotype out here in the South and everybody thinks that we all on some simple stuff and nobody really can spit. So I'm going to show them that other side, show them there is some real lyrical content out here in the South, you know what I'm saying? That's why the fans that look up to Chameleon Air and stay down with Chameleon Air, that's why they support me because they feel like I'm a person that can bridge that gap. So uh, go tell them the truth is here. Chameleon Air, Mixtape Messiah. Tell a friend and your friend gonna go tell a friend and Already, you get the idea. <laughs> oh. The album spawned three singles, Turn It Up, Riding, and Grown and Sexy, although Riding was by far the star of the show. But I still ain't losing. They see me rolling, they hating. This single was huge, and eventually went four times platinum and won him a couple of awards. And the winner is Chameleon Air featuring Crazy Bone. They want to catch me riding. I just want to be successful. That's it. Not even just in music, but in general. There's a lot of people eating off this. People I grew up with, people I went to high school with. So even if it's not rap, just success. If I can be successful doing something, then everybody can eat. Everyone can live good. We came up having nothing, eating cereal for dinner and rice every day. That's why I feel skinny now. We trying to have everyone live good. I feel good having everyone go to Puerto Rico and everyone smiling. That's revenge to me. And um, yesterday I was supposed to do an interview for 2020 for the song uh, Riding. Despite the success he had already achieved, Chameleon Air still wanted to grow his brand. Around 2006, he released about two mixtapes and then went on to focus on other business ventures, such as a modeling agency. I'll go out and see people when everybody wants to make money. And I'll meet video girls who want to live the good life and all, but it's like, you gotta have a plan, you know? In addition to a modeling agency, Cam bought a third house and started a tour bus agency. The man was clearly about his business. Around 2007, Cam dropped the third installment of his mixtape Messiah series and then dropped his second album called Ultimate Victory. So much drama in the, industry. the album peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 79,000 copies in the first week. Despite dropping a solid album, it did not match up to its predecessor. Three singles came off this album, namely Hip Hop Police, The Bill Collector, and Industry Groupie. Now over the next couple of years, Cam continued to balance his music career with his business ventures. He then went on to drop more mixtapes and announced a third studio album called Venom to be released around 2009. The album did not come out in that year. Around the same time, Chameleon Air met Mark Suster, an American entrepreneur and venture capitalist who at the time was affiliated with Upfront Ventures. After meeting the businessman, Cam became interested in his online video talent agency called Maker Studios and invested in it. He also launched a global innovation tournament at Stanford University as part of the Stanford Entrepreneur Thought Leader Seminar Series. 
As we have already mentioned though, as soon as Cam started focusing on one of his two career paths, business and music, one began to fade away. This is exactly what happened with his music career. Over the next few years, his music career began to steadily decline, with his Venom album continually pushed back and then cancelled, and then reinstated and then pushed back again. This kept happening until he parted ways with Universal around 2011. To date, he has not released another studio album, although he has released plenty of mixtapes and his business ventures ended up paying off. Around 2010, he dropped the mixtape Major Pain. Real, recognize, real, I don't expect you to cheer. You a victim of the system, go sit back in your chair. And by May, he had welcomed his first son and found out that his mother had cancer. In light of these two major changes in his life, Cam kept on working and invested in property. Around 2010, he also ended his beef with Paul Wall, and the duo went on tour together and even had interviews together. We had been bumping into each other a lot. It's kind of been died down for a little bit now, but we just kind of needed that stamp of approval. I think the tour kind of just solidifies it for other people. It's not like today we just stopped beefing. We stopped beefing a long time ago, but nobody believed us. But this is like a real big step. We're on the same tour bus right now. That in itself is really big. I mean, Paul walking around with his shirt off and I'm like, man, ain't nothing changed, huh? That's a big step. But for the most part, that's pretty cool. We've come back full circle. After this, Cam went on to release more mixtapes. Then around 2013, he invested in Cruise Automation, a self-driving automation tech company in its early stages. By the end of the year, he had confirmed a net worth of about $15 million, and that number continued to grow over the years. Around 2014, Maker Studios sold itself to Walt Disney and saw Cam earning over $20 million off a $1.5 million investment around 2009. In 2015, he invested in Lyft and was appointed entrepreneur in residence at Upfront Ventures. You met a partner at Upfront Ventures 10 years ago. You've been in this game for a long time. You also said that you wanted to make more money in investing than you did in music. Have you reached that point yet? And can you share some of the things that you've learned, kind of your pro tips um, on investing in startups? Um, actually, my focus is not necessarily about money as much as people think. I, I, there's a lot of miscommunication out there and people often post articles that I'm trying to be a billionaire. That's not actually the case. I believe that this industry has a lot of, uh, you know, just value in it and this value hasn't been given to my community so what I'm trying to do is learn as much as I can make a lot of investments so I can plant some seeds to help my family but then also bring a lot of other people in um, that's really why I'm here I feel like a lot of these companies are disrupting the world um, you know there's self-driving cars there's you know uh, electric buses there's wireless charging and so much innovation that's happening here and people from my world generally don't now run 2016 Cruise Automation was sold to General Motors for over a billion dollars. And let's just say Cam got paid once again. In 2018, Cam announced his latest business venture, a social media app called Convos. Convos is the best place to have face-to-face -face collaborative conversations about current. And in 2019, Cam publicly announced that he would be investing in a startup company owned by a woman of color. By September of that year, he had invested in a company called Atoms, the first footwear company to come in quarter sizes. Cam also teamed up with Damon John of the Shark Tank and eventually invested in another company. And that's the story of Chameleon Air in a nutshell. Unlike most rappers who solely focus on the music, Chameleon Air was always about in business, always about growing himself, always about success. As of 2022, the rapper has an estimated net worth of around $50 million. He is still technically active in the music industry and still does bookings and performances. On Spotify, he has 2.4 million monthly listeners and his most listened to songs are three different versions of writing, Turn It Up and Being Broke. Well, when I started investing, well, first, the, the state of the music industry is designed to rip off an artist. That's what I believe. I believe that when the check gets handed to an artist, the check is normally not right. I never take a hiatus, debate if the kid's the greatest. My album anticipated, I made it, now haters hate it. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Chameleon in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.